So Tracy, I'm going to hand over to you in a moment. Um, everyone's going to introduce themselves um, because it would take a very long time for me to introduce all the fabulous um, things that everyone here does. And they, they're all hyphen type people, you know, multi hyphenates, as they like to say these days. They're all doing lots of different things and lots of different mediums with very diverse backgrounds. So um, Tracy, I'm going to introduce you to everybody and I'm going to um, share the screen. And hopefully this works in terms of you being seen and you talking. In fact, let me just get. Um, bear with me, everybody, as I wrangle the. And. Whoops, that didn't work. There you go. Um, now, um, Tracy, do you want to um, just start and, and then we'll see how we go? Sure thing. Is, um, is that volume all right? Yep. Right. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for your presence. And um, I'm just going to quickly, as Maggie said, skip a stone metaphorically across my creative practice. So I wanted to start with uh, this. This photo is um, a stone carving that I made a few years ago. It's made of the local Northland bedrock. And it, it is, for me, it's okay, it's a picture of a swan, but it's, it's metaphorical. And there's a lot of how I work. It's multi layers of meanings, metaphors of material or, or springboards. So this, this one is titled Cigna and it relates to an astronomy constellation in the Northern hemisphere, which crosses the wings and the body of a swan shape and it's a wayfinding constellation for people that see that much in the way that our southern cross is down here. So there was all those layers in this in this stone carving and it's um the, the, the wings are not wings they're they're stylized that's the word I was looking for because I wanted to get across those ideas of uh, you know how do you show movement and water and waves and wind and that swan is paddling like mad underneath to keep so calm on the surface. And so there's, there's those elements in, um, in the work as well, which is, is a, how I work a lot. And I wanted to just invite everyone, this might seem a segue, but if everyone, we all take a deep breath. A deep breath in, it's good for me as well, and letting it completely out. And just have a, a momentary thought about what do we just breathe in that's so vital? You know, we call it oxygen, it's our life support. I'm gonna come back to that. So if we move along to our next slide, please, Maggie. A lot of my work is, uh, as I said, making the unseen seen. So, so whether it's a conceptual element or the hidden elements and relatedness. I really um, hope that people can form relationships or reform, reconnect relationships. Um, Tracy, can I just ask, can you see um, the second slide? I just, it feels oh. like, okay, just a sec. Still only this one. I'll just keep talking. Okay. Um, there oh, we there go. go. There it is, is that it? Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's it, that's perfect. So this, this next slide is, um, so the opposite of working in stone, which lasts for, well, it comes from millions of years ago and will last for at least hundreds more, unless it gets smashed. So this is experiential, it's in the moment. Um, I spent two years meeting with a group of women. We had a conscious women's meetup group, met at a local beach where we could see the full moon rise. And that always happens at sunset, something I learned. And so sometimes when the weather was like this, absolutely beautiful colors reflecting all around. So we're facing east, see the moon rise above that island there. And I took, um, I led a, an experiential ritual so that people could let go of what they didn't want anymore in their lives, set intentions into the waves of what they did want, we just wrote in the wet sand, and that those lines in the sand was a walking spiral, um, labyrinth path. So that's a, an ancient technology for centering and, and mind health and connecting and breathing. So let's all take another deep breath. I'm going to get you to do this a few times. So breathing in really deep down past your diaphragm into your belly metaphorically and then letting it out. So moving along to our next slide, there's, there's this, this 
spiral effect and a lot of um, especially for kiwis looking at this the first thing they saw was a koru and the fern frond and that's absolutely true that is definitely in this piece as well but my actual inspiration was that walking meditation labyrinth path if you followed the light it would go all the way into the center and then all the way back out without ever having turned around and that's that's an amazing ancient process but what's depicting it is some modern LED lights. And so I just love that juxtaposition. And what we're seeing is a static shot. This was an experiential um, immersion thing. And it the, the light changed, changed color through the visible light spectrum. So all the colors of the rainbow. Um, and we set the timing, the program of it was set to change with a calm breathing motion. And there was also music in the background that was set to the right frequencies to support that. And so it was a, intended to be in the feedback we got, which was great, a, a very meditative, immersive experience. The colors reflected off the white walls when the door was closed on the small room. And so you were breathing in the colors as they changed. And it was, it was um, that experiential trying to create a relationship and a new way of thinking about things that is, is the um, inspiration behind it and there's many more layers of metaphor of the materials but we'll save that for another time so just coming back to another deep breath breathing in deep and letting it out i wanted to keep us breathing consciously because my inspiration for why i'm interested in plants and technology is that it's, it's our vital life force the planet would not actually have a, an ecosystem that we could exist in without the plant world. And we sort of know that on one level, plants give us oxygen, they take away our CO2 and carbon sink it, and that's wonderful. But what I've, I've noticed is we often go about our, our busy lives without being conscious of it. When we're not conscious, we don't appreciate it. And when we don't appreciate it, we can tend to trash on it. And so, um, the, the other aspect of the spiral that's important why I chose this slide is that it is in so many forms of nature. And one of the things that I'm studying at the moment is the swirls of phytoplankton in the ocean when they're seen from space. So here we're coming with the technology. We've got NASA and other space stations and not only taking photographs of the phytoplankton in the ocean, which forms the spirals, the currents of the wind and the waves, form it into spirals that are seen from space, but they're also now actually measuring through the light frequencies that each different kind of phytoplankton gives off. They can measure what's in a community and what depth, so that they're using LIDAR and OCI, ocean color um, instrument. And this is informing the science, so bringing in more information to inform us about what's happening with the, you know, the one half of our Earth's lungs. And, um, and I think I probably need to wrap up and pass on to our next speaker. But um, that's what gets me really excited is how do we use tech to learn? How do we use tech then to share it with lots and lots and lots of people so that we can all make more conscious choices in the world? Thank you, Tracy. Much appreciated. And I guess you would just best describe yourself as a kind of, you're a cross-disciplinary artist, I guess. You, you work in technology, but you also work in ceramics. Yes, stone, ceramics, steel, um, found object and on my sculpture sort of side of things. I also love to print, make, paint. I do research and writing and I'm a musician. So it's like, yeah, lots of different Thank art you. fingers. <laughs> Much appreciated. All right, so um, the next person that we've got is Fiona. I'll get you to, to pop up now, Fiona, if that's all right. Yep, all good. Can you see me? Um, no, no. There you are. There you are. Yep. I'm here. Okay. I can't Maybe see myself. I'll get everyone just to do a very brief introduction to their background, Fiona, just to, just a quick start so we all know who you are and what how you how you are here in terms of Sure, sure, sure. So thank you. Um I just want to say thanks for the opportunity to speak to you all today. And um the privilege it is to actually have the time to to bring this all down into um, um like a something that I can speak about because most of what I do is kind of out there and until it's not so um uh so my background um I actually grew up in Adelaide and uh as a young child wandered around the Adelaide Hills uh, well not the Adelaide Hills but in the foothills I was really lucky at that point where there was lots of bush still 
and I just used to spend a lot of time hanging out there and um, just looking at plants. And so I think for me it was inevitable that I wanted to have an occupation uh, with the land, being outside, um, observing nature. And uh, so when it came time to choose what to do for after school, I just um, ended up doing agricultural science, which in itself was an amazing thing. It didn't wasn't really wanted to do what I wanted to. I wanted to be a vet, but I ended up with this. Um, amazing uh, view of the biological sciences. Quite a quite a big um, uh, outline, you know. Look of uh, look at, at biological sciences, and um, I think um, from there I learnt what the 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 contemporary thinking is around a lot of those things and a lot of the principles in farming and. Um, uh, so and and so I did that, and then um, found myself feeling a little bit like I didn't want to in, end up in that um, as an occupation because I wasn't terribly keen on the old spray and kill and um, minimalist kind of me mechanistic kind of view of agriculture. So I became a teacher and lecturer for La Trobe University and was teaching around natural resource management. Um, some of the postgrad work I did was micro, uh, looking at um, microbiology and uh, the um, uh, how um, how good bugs can outcompete bad bugs. So so very interested in things like um, integrated pest management uh, and also how um, we can use the natural world, in fact, to um, to keep us well and to keep all living systems well. Um, when my husband and I and our kids moved here to New Zealand in um, 2000, no, in 1998 it was actually, and I think um, where I couldn't couldn't actually find a job in the area I was looking for because I tend to find like Maggie, you were talking before about silos and that where I work is sort of in the in between spaces between things, and so uh, it's tricky to kind of like to look on the jobs page and go oh yes that's me because I exist in a different place as far as what I most um, what I can bring most to so I found myself starting to train more in the in the creative um, pursuits as well as um, still keeping up my interest in biological sciences and so I have now got, uh, so I've now trained in, um, I have a certificate in Fakairo in carving. Um, I've been doing painting. I, I did um, some work with, uh, um, so the Learning Connection in Wellington, Art and Creativity School. Um, I've, so I do painting, I, I'm now doing clay. And um, I think um, what I'm, Oh yeah, we'll, we'll go to the first slide, I think it's probably the best way. Um, actually, that's the third one, but I can talk, is there a possible way to actually get the trees? That one there. Okay, so I just wanted to speak briefly about my current um, inquiry, and I think when we, when we moved to New Zealand, what I didn't realise was I was really trying to connect with this land and this new space, because I'd spent a lot of time being in the Australian bush, and connecting with that, that when I came here it was foreign and I didn't really understand it. So I think spending more time in the bush and uh, exploring it with the eyes of an artist has really, really made a difference to me. When I forget and I'm kind of busy, busy, like um, Tracy was talking about, busy, not breathing, not, you know, just getting on with things, I forget to look at things with the eyes of an artist. and. I lose this that very special spiritual connection that I I love when um, I'm being present with things with 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 all. Um, so on this picture, I've got a healthy area of bush, and which happens to be uh, I'm very lucky to um, have 20 acres of part well part of its bush. On the right hand side of the picture is the sick trees we have in our back paddock, um, which did have cows in it, and we're not, we're not running cows anymore. 
uh, or we never did, but when we bought the land, the, the, the trees were already sick. So this is what led me to start going down the regenerative agriculture and having a look at what's going on with the air, with the soil in this um, ecosystem. How can I bring some healing to this? And um, in all of my inquiries around how do we keep the soil healthy? How do we? How are we doing these things? Um, I'm finding that that is translating into my artwork. So with the soil studies I'm doing, it's like, well, you know, um, when I look at the clay and that I'm working with, it's like, ah, oh, so how do these particles bind together? How? Um, what brings strength and? Um, and I, it's kind of like where I'm looking at regenerating the bush, I'm looking at my artwork going, so do I need a soft touch? Do I need to push in hard? Or do I need to just leave it alone right now? Those kind of principles are, are definitely working between all of these areas that I'm, I'm researching and studying and engaged with at the moment. So um, I... Uh, yeah, so, the, the, I'm just I'm just conscious of time. Which, which time. slide is the next one? Sorry. Yeah, cool. No, next slide would be great. Thank you. This very one. Much. Yeah, that'll yeah. do. That'll do. Um, so I, I've been so in studying the microbial world. I've been using a macro on my phone. I've got a very basic phone, but I'm loving what's showing up in the left hand side there. Um, because I've been in, engaging with microbes and small things, I wanted to see what is it like. How does light work through plants? I've been engaging in plant dyes and growing plant uh, plant um, plants for dyeing. Um, I the the picture on the right hand side is a fabric that's been dyed and looking at how that works with the fabric, how it holds tight, those kinds of things. Um, and then the next slide, Maggie. Thank you. And and just wanting to point to some of the amazing. Um, uh, inspirations that I've had. Um, certainly Victor Schauberger on um, whose observation of nature is incredible and we look at cycloid spirals and things like that and then I see Izzy Miyake uh, with the light there and his shapes of nature. So those things, um, that's part of my research as well is looking at what incredible people are doing and how they're bringing na nature into their artwork and something for me to aspire to. Cool. Thank, thank you so much, nice Fiona. Today. That's lovely. Really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, and if anyone is um, watching has questions, we're going to have a quick Q&A at the end of everyone's presentation. There's a couple more to go. And it, just so that you kind of get a synthesis of people's practice, I guess. So thank you, Fiona. Um, I think the next person up is Jade, if you're there. Oops. You're there? <laughs> hey, Jade. I'm here. hey Jade and your companion. So um, welcome Jade. Um, very brief yeah. introduction to yourself and just your quick background and then we'll get into the slides. Yeah. If you want, yep, yeah, that's the slide I want. Hi, I'm Jade Morgan. Um, I'm an artist. Um, I've been an educator in a tertiary setting um, for quite a number of years. Uh, teaching uh, digital media production. Um, I am also a digital media creator. Uh, I have a background in uh, web design um, before I became an educator. Um, I currently live and work on my land, which is a uh, lifestyle block. Um, but it's kind of more of a bush block. Um, I've been here for about 30 plus years. My husband has been on this land for 50 plus years. His mother has been on this land for 80 plus years. And I've actually researched the, this um, property um, well over 100 years ago. So... I have a real good connection with this uh, place. Um, I've got a few notes here, sorry. I'll just check on my notes. 
Okay, I have a, a strong interest in the relationships between the metaphysical world and the natural world. Um, in more recent years, my creative practice has focused more around spiritualism, grief and gratitude and guidance. And that's kind of since my husband passed over. Um, so I can move to the next slide. Oh, this is a, that other slide just showed me at one of my, uh, an exhibition that I did where, uh, my last exhibition. So in Plant Lab, my questions that I'm kind of researching is how we connect to plants through memories. Um, why and how certain plants and places in nature imprint on us? How do they connect with us through like feelings, emotions, and perhaps vibrations or frequencies? And how do those plants, oh, sorry. And oh yes, and how do those plants or places communicate back to us? Uh, you know, how do those relationships work? If we're able to tune in, then there's a lot more going on than we realize. So my process so far, um, I'm currently doing a 100 day project online just as a daily practice. So that uh, in there, I can include uh, any of my findings musings, uh, thoughts, observations, my ideas, and or imagery that supports my investigations or evidence of those investigations such as uh, research and recollection, some documentation of my memories or other people's memories. Um, but I've also Something that is completely new to me, I have been making soap and uh, using botanicals. And these botanicals are things that come from my garden or my land. Um, I'm using 100% natural ingredients and um, most of them are organic ingredients. And in these bars of soap, I'm trying to capture the essence of uh, those who have passed on, perhaps, or someone special, or a point of time or place. Um, and this one here is uh, kind of a little tribute to my mum. I'm trying to capture her in a bar of soap. And as I'm making these things, little uh, things are kind of coming to me. This uh, little cane basket here was something that my grandmother made. And um, so as I'm making things, uh, little things kind of pop up. Have you got the next? Okay. So this is another one. Um, and I kind of love this because it looks like a butterfly. So things that I'm using... Uh, it's all experimentation and um, I'm just trying, I'm not getting the strong vivid colors that I usually work in. I love using really, really strong colors. Um, so a lot of it's trial and error color wise. I incorporate scents that perhaps remind you of someone or, or remind me of someone or I don't use any scent at all because I'm actually, I've got quite a high sensitivity to um, fragrances, hence why I only use natural products in these soaps. Um, but, you know, the, uh, it's, it's next, next slide. Oh, I think that might be it, Jade. I think we've got, that's it. oh, no, that's it. Yep, no, that's it. Okay, and this one. So this one is, shows a little bit of my process with the soap making inspired by um, times and places I'm also doing several audio recordings of nature that have um, that coincide with certain events or dates or times and I've also been collecting um, items of nature that 
support these recordings and these soaps that I've been making. And I don't know if you can actually see me on video there, because I can see you, Maggie, but I can't see me. Yes. Um, so here is from one of those bars of soap. This is kind of what's come out from that. And uh, my latest one, it's almost like they just, um, I have in my mind what I want to do. And when you slice into this, you never know what you're going to get. So it's, kind of like a little surprise anyway that is me in a nutshell thank, thank you jade you. that's so interesting every time you talk about what's evolving with the practice and i love the fact that you're a digital artist making soap I and know, that somehow so those two things are mixing together right in terms of sound recording and stuff so thank you isn't that crazy right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it no, that's fantastic all right so the last um two speakers um today are vivian and alan who i'm going to get i'll get you to, to close um your um just yep. your video and i'll get alan and viv to pop back in hi there are you seeing us i am good <laughs> so, so i'm going to move across to you so Good. Vivian and Hi I'm uh, Vivian Thonga. And I'm Alan Thomas. And so that's that's what we're going to, that, that's the catchphrase for our collaboration. And we're working together on this bioreceptivity. Very briefly, my background is a research scientist in a biological area. And I was working with small molecules, basically proteins and interested in the immune responses to proteins. Um, I have always had an artistic practice alongside that scientific career, but more recently than I've had more time to expand that scientific practice. And my practice is really interested in the nature of materiality and the ways in which we as humans can understand materiality, but the limitations that there are to those understandings. So um, I have been a psychologist in my main career and then switched, as Alan did, moving into um, an art world. Um, I studied creative writing and um, I'm now a poet and writer after the psychology thing, but you can never leave your past behind. It always comes creeping along with you. So um, the things I'm interested in are um, not only um, the deep down subconscious, unconscious areas, which are the things that come bubbling up in poetry, but also what's out there. And I think in our working together, this is the first real collaboration that we've had. We're finding that there's a heck of a lot that we do now together because we've been together for so long. Cool. So to move on to what we're doing together, the background to this print is essentially the view from our window that we're looking at at the moment. And that's a mangrove. Um, area in a tidal creek with the Waitangi forest uh, behind us. And the catalyst for our collaboration is the word bioreceptivity, and I'll come to unpack that in a moment. Um, and what we're trying to do in the, at the beginning of this collaboration within this plant lab context is, is not to be too defining in our roots. Now, within the quantum world, and as a, you're aware probably the chlorophyll within plants utilizes quantum effects to tunnel electrons through it. And those quantum effects essentially get something from a point A to point B, taking all the available point paths at the same time. So there's no jumping from one place to another. Everything seems to happen all at the same time and it collapses at some later point elsewhere. So and that's true for us as well. We took on the plant lab idea and we have both run off simultaneously in totally opposite directions um, doing everything we know. So that's what we're in the middle of. <laughs> so if we can move on to the next slide. So just to unpack bioreceptivity bio quickly. Easy for you to say. Yeah, obviously. Um, so the original uh, coining of the word bioreceptivity was only in the 1990s, and it referred to the surface colonization of buildings by biological uh, forces, primarily plants, cyanobacteria, and so forth. But we think that there are other ways of understanding that world, 
And one of the areas that we're both interested in is this concept of Umwelt, which was uh, originated by the German Jakob von Oskel last century, century before last actually now. Um, and his idea was basically, we live within a bubble of limitations to our understanding. And there's a world outside that bubble that we're not privy to. If you look at modern neurobiological approaches to things, people like Anil Seth, moving on to the right, look at the way that the humans have got a capacity for the world and the way we understand the world, perceive it. And Seth and many others essentially see the way we see the world as essentially a controlled hallucination. So we have expectations of the world and we get a small amount of information that comes in and we're constantly correcting those expectations to see how the world balances compared to those expectations. So those areas together suggest the limits for where our understanding might be. And what I'm interested in doing is poking at those limits and trying to understand what they actually are. For any organism, there's the, its ability to sense the world is very important and then the understanding of the world comes from that ability to sense it. Different organisms have different ways of sensing the world. And I think quite clearly plants have a quite different set of ways of looking at the world than humans do, for instance. And then within this term bioreceptivity, there's the capacity of any system to either accept new influence or reject it. So whether it can move from one state to another and its resistance to change and the the point at which things may tip from one state to another. We can move on to the next slide, Maggie. So one of the things that become quite central to what we're looking at is the recent observation of the, the relative biomass that there is, the global biomass in the world. And this is a digital print we've created, essentially based upon data coming from those studies. And those studies show that essentially 83% of the global biomass comprises plant life, which is hopefully fairly clearly evinced here. And then the next major proportion of it is lies in bacteria. And then in another division of prokaryotic life called archaea comes yet a yet smaller um, amount. That's the pink stripe. Um, pink sorry, ish. actually the fungi is the pinkish, oh. the archaea is the bluish. Okay. And then we move on to protists, which are the very small unicellular and small multicellular forms. And then at the very right, you see that red stripe, that's the proportion of animals in the world. And the amount that humans comprise would be far less than one pixel of all of that. So, so that, that print tends to, we want that to summarize our interest in plant lab and the preponderance of plant influence globally. You can have the next slide. next slide. So, mind blown by this enormous biomass of plants, um, I started to get obsessed with this idea, the 83%. And um, we put a poem together, um, the two of us, and this is from various words we've encountered. Jade, this matches in with your thing of cutting open the soap because this poem is a cutting open poem. You'll see that it's got the same, that it's got its title, but then it's got each line has a reflection that is like a butterfly. So live plants, meaning plants live. So each one is a kind of opened out, um, each line is an opening out of a phrase. So I'm not gonna read it all, but, if you read through the poem or for anybody wants to read through, it's kind of more of a page poem than a talking poem. It's quite difficult to read out loud. Right at the bottom, know all books all know, turn all pages all turn, smell old paper, old smell, page of essence of page. Hey, Jade, <laughs> your essence of page. So refresh, dip, page, 83, page, dip, refresh. So this is me, this is where I'm coming to. Um, it is the page itself is a tiny piece of a plant, a tiny piece of a tree. It's got history in it. We have no idea in our library through there, 
how old some of these books are, how old the trees are, how long they sat there before they were cut up, pulped, sliced into books and pages. But those pages, which are plant life, carry so much information with all of the ink that's been put on there and the knowledge of that time through the ages. So it's like this incredible MRI almost picture all these chunks and slices. So I've put together, and this is something I'm still doing, and I'm afraid I probably won't stop doing it after plant life until you erase the Miro board. But I'm putting together all these little pink slips, each of which has something from page 83 of hundreds. And I'm hoping to get, I don't even know how many it is, but it may get to thousands of books. I'm just plodding through the books in our library. And each page 83 has got something of relevance to plant life. So that's what we're putting together. And it's gradually engulfing the little, um, you can see on there what's on page 83. Um, what, um, what is my practice in, in relation to plants and so on? These are all getting engulfed. Being by, subsumed. Yes. Subsumed by whatever's on page 83 of a huge variety of books. So... Next. And next slide then, please, Maggie. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, yeah. So, and this is the final slide, just quickly go through what one of the areas that we're working on, which is looking at this bioreceptivity. Um, one of the things that we've done is some pieces that I made a couple of years ago, which were made from plaster, we put out into the environment and just looked essentially into a plant world and just saw how the plants interacted with them. And having taken that plaster out recently, we're now in the process of investigating quite what's happened to it. So that column on the left, is that one of those pieces of art work? And then you're seeing on the, to the right of that, essentially some of the ants nests, the plant roots, the plant leaves that are blown across it repeatedly, that was scored a sort of tracery of history of those interactions. And coming quickly to the mangroves, as I was saying, the area that we live in, Yay. it seems <laughs> many plants, I won't say most plants, in their process of photosynthesis, obviously create products. And some 70% of those products seem to go not in sustaining the plant, but in sustaining the environment around them, the very deliberate ploy for the plants to be able to obtain the nutrients, micronutrients and resources that it needs. Those include fungi and bacteria and other life forms. So what we're interested in doing is exploring how that is happening within the mangrove area. So what we're using at the moment, we've got a microscope and we're just starting to understand how to drive that with some of the samples from the mangroves. And also we've got a submersible uh, camera that we're able to now start tracking what's happening within those mangroves day and night and start to integrate some of that into our ways of looking at the world and the influence of those plants on their environment. Good. Pretty Thank much you. it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, both of you. Fascinating. Thank you, all of you. Fascinating. I'm just going to stop share um, at the moment and we'll get back. If I can get everybody to, um, to bring back your videos and you can unmute yourselves as well. Um, so thank you, all of you. That was absolutely fascinating. I, I, I find it interesting that every time we do presentations to each other I learn more about you and and find more connections to what we're all doing and some of you are not necessarily you know I know we're collaborating in different ways but I do find it interesting that there, there's sort of a themes emerging um, so maybe I'll follow Tracy's lead and we can all just take a deep breath for a moment and a big pause <sighs> um so I think this is the time um, really um, there's an opportunity to um, for those who are participating and watching to ask questions if you have any. I think um, for ease, you could put it in the chat or you could put it in the Q&A, either, either one. Um, and maybe I'll also get those of you who are here, the panelists, just to say a little bit about was there something that you learned new about or, or found a connection to about any of the presentations today that you didn't know otherwise in terms of your own work? That's the first question, because I always find that process happens to me anyway. 
anyone notice anything where they went, oh, actually, I must talk to them about this or a connection to your own practice? Siona? Yeah, I'm just um, with Vivian and Alan, Alan um, just that whole thing around the space around things, that's um, that really, um, that spoke to me. It's a, it's, I've been looking more at sort of the connection point as opposed to the actual space. But I mean, I think there's lots to have a conversation about with that. That's really exciting. Cool. Mm. Um, I've noticed, Kim, you've got your hand up. Um, is that because you'd like to ask a question? Do you want me? No, no, that's fine. Yes. <laughs> You do want to ask a question. Okay, do you want me to, I'm just going to make you allow, allow you to talk if you wanted to ask a question. Yes, no? Maybe um, if you have got a question, I'll get you to just type it in below or just let me know because this system's a little bit, webinars are slightly different than Zooms in that I've got less kind of less ability to see um, how that process works. So, um, so the next question I guess is in terms of Plant Lab, how, and please be honest about this, what have you noticed is different in terms of your practice as a result of participating in Plant Lab, if anything? And it's, you can say, it's just nice to see other people every day in a COVID environment. But <laughs> have, you noticed, ha, have you noticed anything different? And, and what is that and what, what do you think it is? I'd like to speak to that because I've really enjoyed the um, the process of you getting us to present. And as you were saying earlier, presenting more than once over time, it's really helping me get clear on, on what my practice is about at the moment, where I've come from, um, some of the things I didn't talk about, but uh, prepared for this talk, but didn't talk, just helped me reground in all my different backgrounds and how they're synthesizing in new ways through this new inquiry I've got with Plant Lab. So I'm really appreciating hearing everybody else's work as we're springboarding ideas. And, you know, I'm, I'm relating to something with each one of every other um, member of the group's practice, but I'm also synthesizing more about my own practice and getting better at articulating it. So, um, and I'm, I'm inquiring into some new technologies that I probably wouldn't have I would have thought, oh, that's that, you know, I'm not very technological. I won't go there. So I'm really loving the, the support of knowing that I'm going to have other people that I can call on to go, how does this work? <laughs> Who else wants to do this kind of work with me? Or, yeah, so thank you. Um, anything else in terms of process or plant lab or just a comment about anything that anyone has said so far? Yeah. Um, yeah. Tracy, I, sorry. Um, I'm actually loving the opportunity to actually uh, explore and experiment with uh, mediums that I've never done before. So uh, for me, it's all playtime, but yeah, it's given me a fantastic opportunity to literally get my hands dirty because usually I'm sitting in front of a computer. So it's good to actually do something that's uh, hands-on for a change. So Thank you. <laughs> I'll get you to just mute, Jade. Yeah. Um, so, um, what about anyone else? Uh, this isn't doesn't have to be a this isn't a praise fest, by the way. It's more just a, a comment process. Alan, yeah. Uh, well, I don't know about praise fest. I was going to, but anyway, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was. I was going to say I found it really interesting because we've all had an opportunity to say something about our practice already and I think for this was the first time for me that I'd heard you have an expanded period of time talking about your practice and the transdisciplinary nature of things and it really helped me to tie up some of the the sense of the environment that we're working in and how that we can exploit that further so I, I found that yeah very valuable to hear that. Mm. Thank you. And it's, I guess, also to reiterate, there's other people who are unable to be present today. We've recently welcomed in Tracy Benson, who's over in Brisbane, who's like a, a mad trans Tasman node. Um, we've also got um, Kelly and Kim, both of whom have quite different practices than what we've just heard. Um, so I think um, kind of as we start to tie up, one of the things to say is that what we're doing now is really 
I mean, originally it was meant to be just a one-off installation in a set space of time, a little bit like I'd done previously. I get a key and then we see what happens. And I think as part of one of the responses to COVID um, and also the need to be inclusive is to how to find a way to actually deepen that installation or that lab idea. So it became a period of time. And so as a result of the stuff that the disruption of COVID, I guess I've shifted and turned and now what I turned it into was a much longer project of research online where we meet regularly, where we have symposiums like this and we'll have some online workshops going forward. So that by the time we get to the space, we ourselves may decide simply to get a key, walk in and then see what happens. A little bit like my VJing in that field in, in the park, right? I just turn up and see what comes out of the VJ program. Um, we may plan something, but, but in essence, the next stage of this is to have maybe a couple more online workshops, but certainly in August and or September, particularly to September, to have an installation in the CBD at a place that we will announce soon, um, where we will have a lab, so some of us will be in residence working, we'll have um, some presentation of our process, and an opportunity for people to learn essentially from what we're doing. And I think for me, the cool thing about that, which I've been talking to all of you recently, is rather than think about it as a group show, which is kind of almost a convention within an arts point of view, it's not present creating something for a show. It's like a, it's like we're, we're presenting artistically or creatively our process thus far and opening a window into it. And so that may turn into a fully formed installation or it could be like a window just into half formed ideas. We don't know yet. But I think it's also getting out of that convention of, okay, we're going to present something to everybody that's finished, or resolved. Mm. And I think that idea of resolution is a very arts-based idea in a certain sense. Everyone wants to have something resolved for examination. But I think we may find things that are partially resolved because, uh, because the process of life is always a temporary resolution anyway, at least in my point of view. Um, so yeah, so I guess um, for those of you watching, there will be um, some further details. Um, I'm going to just share a screen for a moment, um, just to get back to oops, the very last slide. There is um, here, there's some details. So you can email me if any of you are watching on this email address, maybe take your phone out or do a print screen if you're on there. Um, that's my contact details, and there's also afiworld.com. At the moment, is um, the platform for where we're sharing um, updates. And there's also afiworld on Facebook and Instagram. So there will be some updates and some further information about people's projects on there. So do take a note of that. And um, and what we'll do going forward is just keep everybody in the loop, so that ideally. Um, people can travel along the research process and certainly have an opportunity to come into the physical installation if you're in Whangarei or virtually enter it in some way, shape or form. So um, are there any final comments about this morning as we sort of wind up uh, this morning, everybody? Any, any final thoughts or things you just want to add? Or I'm thinking it's probably the winding up time at this point. Any, I know some of you are, are kind of um, watching from the sides. This is a chance if you want to make a comment or something like that. I'll just take a pause to allow that to happen and some space. Um, I would just like to say thank you, Maggie, for um, putting on this webinar. It's uh, been a fantastic opportunity. And um, yeah, thank you. Welcome. So um, with that note, um, what I'll do is I'll um, just like to close by all of us and the inspiration of um, Tracy and her beautiful spiral taking a, another deep breath. And just um, give thanks for the opportunity to be here, um, to be able to share information freely in an environment where um, that is a, a privilege, remembering that there are many people in the world who can't share knowledge freely and cannot gather in any form. Um, also to ask that the information today um, be of benefit to the land and the environment that we work in, and thank um, all those who are visible and attended in full and in incarnate bodies and all those who supported us in other dimensions that we know not thereof. Um, so thank you very much to everybody. And um, I ask that we um, go forward, bringing this knowledge and this kaupapa forward for the benefit of all. So blessings everybody. And thank you very much for your time. <laughs>